When we think of space, we think of the wonderful and mesmerising images that were taken by state-of-the-art telescopes like Hubble. It's spectacles like these that inspire a great deal of us to go out and purchase our very own telescopes. However, because decent telescopes are super expensive, we usually find ourselves using a telescope that has a worse magnification than the latest smartphones. Sure, you can see the moon and the odd planet, but that is about the limit. In fact, without a specialised mount that tracks the night sky as the Earth rotates, allowing you to take long exposure photographs, it is almost impossible to produce any images that might be mistaken for a professional shot. So, is it a case of, only with a billion dollar telescope can you see the wonders of the universe with your own eyes? Well, in this video I'm going to be comparing what you can see for the Hubble telescope, my university's telescope, and of course, my telescope. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. I'm here at Loughborough University's observatory. In 2020, Loughborough Uni were ranked the UK's fourth best university. I'm here working on my final year project, but astrophotography is very much a slow burner kind of job. So, in order to pass time in between imaging, I'm going to show you just what I can see. The first thing you need to know about telescopes is that they are time machines. They might not look like it, but they are windows into the past. Because light travels at a finite speed and space is huge, I mean way bigger than you could possibly imagine. Think of Australia, now make it 71,750,000 times bigger and you get the size of our solar system, which is just over one light year. Whereas our observable universe is 93 billion times bigger than that. It is very hard to actually grasp that idea. Our brains struggle when it comes to comprehending something of this size. Light isn't instantaneous. It takes time to travel across the vast distances of space. It's because of this, we are always seeing things as they were, not as they are. One last thing, a light year is a measurement of distance, not time. It's a distance light, the fastest thing in the universe, would travel for a year unimpeded for the vacuum of space. Because it is so fast, we don't really notice the delay here on Earth. Across the river there, that's the Bund Tower, and that is approximately about 600 meters away from me. Now the speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. So when you do 600 meters divided by the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second, you get roughly two microseconds. That's the time delay between the time it takes for the light to bounce off that tower and it reach my eye. So I'm seeing that tower right now as it was two microseconds ago. So the effects of light may seem insignificant on Earth because we deal with such small distances, it's impossible for our brains to comprehend the time delay. But what about when we look towards the skies? This right here is probably the most famous constellation in the world. In fact, I bet when you go outside and look up at the stars, the first ones you look for are these. This is the constellation of Orion. Do you see that bright red star just here? This is a super red giant. It's called Betelgeuse, meaning shoulder. Now, Betelgeuse is about to go supernova. In fact, because Betelgeuse is 430 light years away, there's a fair chance it may have already gone supernova. But the light hasn't had a chance yet to reach us. Which raises the question, are we right now looking at a dead star? Has Betelgeuse already went supernova and the light hasn't had a chance to reach us? Maybe. It might seem crazy to think that when we look at Betelgeuse, we are seeing it as it was 430 years ago. But its time delay is nothing compared to our next target. Do you see that faint fuzzy patch of light? That's not a cloud. That is an island. An island containing over a trillion stars. That is the Andromeda galaxy. It's two and a half million light years away, which means the light from this galaxy has traveled unimpeded for the vacuum of space for two and a half million years, up until the point it hit the center of my camera. And now I've captured it. This is an image two and a half million years old. The Andromeda galaxy is the most distant object you can see with the naked eye. Okay, that is, it's just incredible. It's incredible what you can do with just a camera. The Andromeda Galaxy isn't something that comes around once a year or once a decade. It is there 
365 days. It doesn't go away, it's not something you have to pay to see, it's just there. When you go out and look up at the night sky, it's a free show. And it's possibly the best show in the world when you can see things like this. Over a trillion stars. Maybe there's someone, or maybe there's something orbiting around one of those stars who's looking back at us. It truly is incredible, the detail that can be made out with just a simple camera. But with the right tools, even more extraordinary images can be achieved. This is a gigapixel image of the Andromeda Galaxy. It is the highest resolution image ever taken of it. At this level of detail, this ocean of stars can be resolved to reveal trillions of individual points of light. At this scale, every single point of light is an entire solar system, as it looked 2.5 million years ago. Because the galaxy is so far away, it is as though you are traveling back in time to see things as they were. So to summarize, telescopes are a really cool way of traveling through time. The next thing you need to know when it comes to talking about telescopes is that the bigger, the better. The most important part of a telescope is the primary mirror. This collects light. The best way to describe this is to say that the primary mirror on a telescope is like a bucket. And we are trying to catch raindrops of light. Now all galaxies, nebulas and stars emit light which is made up of photons, which are little quantum packets of energy. And in order to see as much detail as possible, we want to gather as many of these raindrops as we can. So the best way to do so is to have a very big bucket. So the larger your bucket, or the larger your primary mirror, the larger your light gathering capabilities. It really is that simple. So although this telescope is very good for looking up at stars, this one is even better. Out there, there are immense clusters of stars. Stellar nurseries from when stars are born. Supernova remnants from when stars die. Black holes and other curiosities that have puzzled scientists for centuries and still do today. These are just a few of the wonders of our universe. The first thing I want to show you for the telescope is arguably the greatest wonder of our night skies. And then my favourite part of the constellation, the Sword of Orion just here. Now you may notice in this middle star, just there, it seems to look a little bit cloudy, a little bit patchy, maybe a tiny tinge of purpley colour. That's because that's not a star as per se, that's the Orion Nebula, one of the wonders of our universe. It's a stellar nursery where stars are born, a supermassive cloud of dust and gas. The Orion Nebula is a spectacular sight in its own right, but what makes it so special is that it is very easy for us to see. These images were taken with just a DSLR camera. Large telescopes are not very well suited for this target, as their magnification is too high to fully appreciate it in all its glory. The Hubble telescope produces a mosaic image that reveals immense amounts of detail hidden within this supermassive cloud of dust and gas. But is this really what it looks like? Well, when observed through a telescope, the Orion Nebula appears very dark and unsaturated. This is how we see it with our naked eye. Just tiny hints of its structure and colour. In order to bring out more detail, we're going to need to increase the exposure of our cameras as well as take a larger number of images, which we shall stack together in order to produce a much cleaner and detailed final image. Then we can perfect the image with some post-processing in order to showcase all of its incredible colors that our eyes can't quite see. Next up is another gem of our night sky, or to be more specific, 700,000 gems. Okay, it should be about that. Yes, okay, all right, so there it is. There we go, so this is the Great Globular Cluster in Hercules. It's a collection of several hundred thousand stars that are very densely packed together. In fact, the diameter of this cluster is just 145 light years. To put into perspective for you, if you compare this to the sun's neighborhood, then these stars are a hundred times more densely packed together. They are so close to one another that they often collide and produce new stars. 
Although still visible with the naked eye, this deep sky object is better seen with a large telescope. The larger the mirror and magnification, the better the stars at the core can be resolved. Despite it being obvious that images taken with huge, expensive telescopes are better, you can still do some truly special things even as an amateur astronomer. These are images I took of the Cigar, Galaxy and Bode's Nebula. Two excellent targets that can be easily captured in the same field of view. I have photographed these a lot in the past, but in January 2014 something truly special happened. When a star in a cigar galaxy went supernova. The supernova explosion was so bright that it outshone its host galaxy for a number of days. You can see the clear difference here between the images I took with my $800 telescope setup. At this point in time I had just turned 17 and was very new to the world of astrophotography. But from the first moment I saw the likes of the Orion Nebula for a telescope, I knew I was hooked forever. I mean what could beat views like this, that need I say are completely free to see. Even if you don't have the money to afford a decent telescope and mount, there are still plenty of incredible sights you can capture with just a $200 DSLR camera, including one star cluster that you may have already heard of before. And oh, you can still see the Pleiades, look at that, that little star cluster there. Ooh, that's known as the Seven Sisters. This beautiful collection of young stars has a number of very interesting myths behind their origins, which only makes them all the more enchanting to look at. As if they weren't special enough on their own, here is an image I took of them as comet pan stars passed by in our field of view. Going back to one of the earlier targets, the Andromeda Galaxy, it is possible to make out its bright galactic core with even the most basic camera capable of a long exposure. An $800 8 inch telescope reveals the immense structure of the galaxy. In fact all of these images you see before you were taken with my 8 inch telescope. It isn't difficult to outperform the abilities of a much larger scope if you allow yourself the right amount of time. The more effort you put into imaging the night sky, the greater the rewards. You don't need to spend enormous amounts of money in order to see the likes of planetary nebulas, galaxies, stars, planets, supernova remnants and much more. This is one of my favourite ever captures, it's a time lapse of Jupiter over the course of 4 hours. You can even make out the shadow being cast onto it by one of its Galilean moons. Now isn't that just the craziest thing you have ever seen? With nothing more than a couple of mirrors, a camera and a bit of patience, I have seen the motions of other worlds all from the comfort of my back garden. When you buy a telescope, you are unlocking parts of the universe that were previously unavailable. Parts that our ancestors could only dream of. The bigger the telescope, the more there is for you to see. Hubble is soon to be replaced as our favourite space telescope by the James Webb Space Telescope. It is far larger and may be capable to see as far back in time as the very beginnings of the universe. The afterglow of the Big Bang. So there you have it. That's the difference between a $1 billion telescope, a $32,000 telescope, an $800 telescope, and a $200 DSLR camera. I hope, if anything, this video has showed you that you don't need to spend thousands of pounds on telescopes to get amazing images. Most of the time, all you need is clear skies and a lot of patience. In fact, it was in this very spot seven years ago that I stood outside in the freezing cold for two or three hours and took multiple pictures on my DSLR camera and made this image. This image that was nominated for Astronomy Photographer of the Year. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical.